let's bow our heads for a short prayer. Our Father and our God, I just commend myself unto you. You said in your word, in the book of Peter, you said, if any of you will speak, let him speak as an oracle of God. And O God of heaven, I ask, O God, that you touch my lips, O Lord God, with the coal of fire from your altar, Amen. that as I speak today, I will speak as your oracle, Lord, in Jesus' name, Amen. that these words will bring healing, will bring life, it will bring salvation, to change souls, O God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for it, so God, we give you praise. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Let's have our seat in the presence of God. Today, by God's grace, we're looking on the journey of advancement. The word, the word of God, which he gave to us in the month of June, is a good word. A word that promises great things. A word that is like an open check. You know, when somebody tells you, I'll cause you to be advanced, it means many things. It means many, many things. And that's why the, the hymn was, we, we sang today is actually very fitting. It speaks about we going to the higher ground, advancing, a place where the devil's um, darts cannot touch us, a place where we, are, we have abundance, a place where we are filled with God's grace, a place where we have our, everything in abundance. And I pray that that will be our portion in Jesus' name. That even as God has spoken that to us, he will bring it to pass in our lives in Jesus' name. Let's open our Bibles to the book of um, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18. I want someone to read for us. Amen. But the path of the just is like the shining sun. Amen. The path of the just, or the, my other version would say this, the path of a righteous man is like the shining light, yes? That shines ever brighter yes. onto the day of, onto the perfect day. Amen. One thing I just want to say today, like I said, the topic is the journey of advancement, is to correct what most of us are already thinking about advancement. Many people look at advancement from a perspective of a destination. But advancement is not a destination it's a journey. It's not somewhere you say, oh, I have reached. It's not somewhere you say, oh, I have attained. It's something that you keep doing. Bible said, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18, the path of a righteous man is like a shining light that keeps getting brighter and brighter. It's not something that you say, oh, I have attained once. It's not that advancement you say, you think that is the point. In Christianity, as long as you're in this body, there's always something better to attain. As long as you're in this body. No matter where you think you've ever attained, there's something, something more. Imagine more, um, Solomon, who was the wisest man on earth. Just like I said, he, one that is wiser than Solomon, is what? He's here. And who will assume that the wisdom of Solomon can be challenged, can be beat? But that's Christianity for you. Jesus Christ, with all Jesus Christ, the Bible said, if all that Jesus Christ did is written down, there will be not enough books to write them. And yet Jesus Christ said, greater than this shall ye do. Advancement. So when we speak of advancement, I don't want us to limit ourselves thinking of advancement in the way of a destination, but rather look at advancement as a journey, that God is taking you somewhere. And, that the, and the assumption that advancement is a destination is of the devil. It's not, it's not of God. It's not consistent with the scriptures. It's not consistent with God. Never. God wants us to take us from glory to glory. He didn't, tell, he didn't tell us that he's just going to take us one place. But he wants us to take us from one glory to another and to another and to another. That's what God re- desires for us. What somebody else considers stagnancy is to somebody else an advancement. I remember many years ago, uh, before I got married, I was talking to one of my friends and I said, you know what, North America is very hard. I don't know why I have debt, a credit card debt of over twenty thousand dollars, and he laughed. He said, "I earn twenty thousand naira in Nigeria. I wish I even have a credit card that I can even spend from, even even when I need money. I wish I even have that debt that you are talking about." You can imagine where I thought was a stagnancy. Somebody was looking at it as an advancement. He wishes that it could even be in the problem. The problem I'm saying is the problem is even wishing could even be his own. So that's why when we talk about um, advancement, don't see it as a destination. Look at it as a journey itself. And the mindset to think that advancement is a destination is not consistent with God, at least from the passages I've quoted. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18, and glory unto glory, the God of heaven will take us. Say, he said, we are, no, we are moving further and further every day, closer and closer to God. Let's read Isaiah chapter 60, verse 22. Isaiah chapter, six, uh, six, chapter 60, verse 22. There you will see what God intends to do. The to least one person, yes. Sorry, before you read, 
to one person what you think oh you know this is my own small to be honest god has increased us if we all look back yes we might not all be in the same place and the truth is this we can never all be in the same place that is the bitter truth but in the little place you are if you look back you see how god has promoted you yes i am not bill gates i'm not um elon musk or any of those people but you won't believe it i see myself as the most blessed person yes they might say they 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 they, they, they gained or they um they made billions of dollars in the past year i may not have made billions of dollars but what god gave to me to me is more or even more than their own billion of dollars so you can see how God is blessing, is advancing each and every one of us in our little, in our places. Let's read that Isaiah chapter 16 verse 22. The least of you will become a thousand. Amen. So for those who are considered least, Bible said you'll be a thousand. Yes? The smallest a mighty nation. And those who are considered a, a small, God is saying it will take them to become a mighty nation. I am the Lord in its time, I will do this swiftly. Amen. I am the Lord in its time. I'll do this swiftly. That's what God is saying. What God is saying is that, yes, you might not say, oh, where you are, but he's saying for every one of us, I will advance. Might not be at the same pace, might not be at the same level, might not be at the same degree, but he's saying there will be advancement. So, brothers and sisters, don't look at journey as a destination, but see it as a process and as a journey. Consider Paul. Before he met Christ, looking at Paul before he met Christ, he was a man, at least in the religious sphere, was considered everything anyone wants to attain. Let's read the book of Philippians chapter 3, verse 4 to 8. Philippians chapter 3, verse 4 to 8. Though I myself have reasons for such confidence. Yes, you can see Paul has every reason to, be, to boast, to have confidence. He, he has every reason to stand among his brothers and his mates and say, yes, I'm a man. Yes? If someone else thinks they have reason yes. to put confidence in the flesh, I have more. You can see, he has even more. Let's go on. Circumcised on the eighth day. Circumcised on the eighth day. Of the people of Israel. Two. Of the tribe of Benjamin. Three. A Hebrew of Hebrews. Four. In regard to the law, if I receive. Five. As for zeal, persecuting the church. Six. As for righteousness, based on the law, faultless. Seven. But whatever we're against to me. I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For whose sake I have lost all things, I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ. Amen. You can see Paul here was saying that all these things, yes, my people might say that I have done, I've attained something. But for me, these things are nothing. Those 17, he calls in that them dung. He calls in them them garbage. The actual word is actually like poop. Dung is actually like, no, poop. And that's what Paul called these things. That all these things to me are like garbage. Yes, in the human sense, these things are things that people, everybody wants to run after. And he said them in a very, very eloquent way. Talking about an Hebrew is the Hebrew of the Hebrews persecuted the church you might call yourself a pharisee but when you're talking about the pharisee that persecutes i am the one that is fighting for god and yet he said when it comes to advancement i now realize there's something higher and better ahead for me so brothers and sisters yes to you there are many things you might say oh you are here but let me tell you advancement is a journey for P paul before he met christ he would have been considered a man that had every reason to boast, but now he has more. And that was why he was able to say in Philippians chapter 3 verse 10, he said, that I may know him. Amen. That I'm imagine after a man who has preached, a man who has raised the dead, a man who was told many times that was taught to be dead, and he came back to life, a man that, you know, did many things for God, and yet still said, that I may know him. That is the advancement we're speaking about. Advancement that is a journey that at every point in your life, there's something that's always increasing. I remember when I was much younger and I used to play video games. Yes, you get to a point that we call it, that, that's your saving, um, the, your point that you save. You get there, by the time you come back, you can never go less than that. You start from that point again. So and that's how God is taking us. He takes us from one level to another. Yes, if you get here, it says yes. Rest a little bit here. We are going farther. 
Let's also read 2 Corinthians chapter 12, 2 to 5. 2 Corinthians 12, 2 to 5. And Paul was still speaking. Even despite everything Paul did, he said, if I will, if I will have to boast, if I will have to seek somebody that I want to boast in, if there's somebody I want to look at and say that's my destination, I will, let, let's, let us see what he considered a, 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 the journey of, of advancement. Let's see. I know a man in Christ. I know a man in Christ. Who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven. Yes. Whether it was in the body or out of the body, I do not know. Yes. God knows. God knows. And I know that this man, whether in the body or apart from the body, I do not know, but God knows. Yes. Was caught up to paradise and heard inexpressible things. Things that no one is permitted to tell. Yes. I will boast about a man like that. Yes. But I will not boast about myself. Except about my weakness. Amen. He said, such a man I will look up to. Such a man I will say I want to be like. A man that was even, he was able to stand before God in the body. Which many of us have not even seen God, even in our dreams. A man who was able to transcend the first, the second, and he was able to stand in the third heavens. That's such a man I, I, I see. That's the kind of advancement I'm looking at. See, brothers and sisters, many of us living on a, on a platform where our, our knowledge about God is so small that even unbelievers understand it. You say, God can forgive me. Unbelievers. One day I was driving and I saw somebody with a gay pride flag and I said, I'm, I'm gay and I, I also love God. And God also loved me. The truth is this. He knows God loves everyone. But let me tell you, the Bible said it clearly. If you like, you write a million, uh, God loves me on your car. And you're gay, you're going to hell. But he knows God loves him. And you, the only knowledge you have about God is that God loves me. The Bible says in the book of James chapter 2 verse 19, it said, the demons know the scripture and they tremble. Even demons know such things. When Paul was speaking about, we should be looking for advancement. He was speaking of something far, far, far more. Today we are spending more time talking about forgiveness of sin, talking about, oh, the, um, the role of husband and wife in marriages. That's all we're dealing with in church. Because we cannot go beyond that. Unbelievers, even there are unbelievers who don't know Christ, that have good marriages. If they can only apply these principles. There are people who don't come to church, they don't pay tithes, and yet have money. And yet, if you are thinking that that's all you should be focusing on, then you're just wasting your time. We need to go beyond such places. We need to start advancing to a place where things are, are better. Like I said, advancement is a journey, not a destination. We become better and better each day. Yes, you have preached the gospel once, God, but we want to go further, and we must also him. Look at the children of Israel. From the time they were in Egypt to the time they, they, they uh, settled in, in, in um in Israel, the Canaan land, everything, there was advancement all along the way. A man that was breaking stones and was being under oppression one night, and the next day he found himself by the Red Sea. What will you call that? It's an advancement. At least today, he's a free man. He's no longer under the slavery and the bondage of Pharaoh. But did they stop there? No. They knew that there's still more ahead. Yes, they are no longer in Egypt, they are no longer slaves, but they are still more ahead. While they were at the, um, at the, at the, um, at the, 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 the bank of the sea, of the Red Sea, and the next day, they were actually at the other side, and they saw all the enemies floating at the bank of the sea. Was that another level of advancement? At least now they have seen all the enemies dead. But did they stop there? No, they did not. They went further. Let's open our Bibles to the book of Exodus. Exodus chapter 14, verse 30. Exodus 14, 30. Exodus chapter 14, verse 30. Amen. That day, that day, the Lord saved Israel from the hands of the Egyptians. Yes. And Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the shore. Yes. Amen. Amen. So that day, God saved the Egyptians, saved the Israelites from the Egyptians. They saw all the enemies lying dead on the shore. That's to show you another level of advancement. 
And from there, they even had another advancement where they did not even have to toil, they did not have to sow, and yet they were eating every day. They entered into another level of advancement that the enemies were crushed be before them, that God was fighting every of the battle. They entered into another advancement that they even entered into the land. But, and there was still more advancement for them. It's true you have attained one thing today. Brothers and sisters, don't be complacent. The Bible says in the book of Amos chapter 6, verse 1, Amos 6, 1, he said, Woe to them who are at ease in Zion, and who feel complacent in Samaria. That's why like I told you that, uh, let's read the um, NIV version if you, we can, please. Amen. Amos chapter 6, verse 1. If you, you can read, please. Woe to you. Yes. Who are complacent in Zion. Who, those people who feel like, oh, yes, I'm not now in North America. There's no money to pray. Many people, before they came to North America, they went on fasting sessions. God, I need a visa. God, let them pick me. Let that thing pick me. Now that I picked you in North America, you feel like, oh, yes, there's no, I've, I've reached the, this destination. Go on. And to you who feel secure on, on Mount Samaria. Yes. You notable men of the foremost nation. Yeah. To whom the people of Israel come. Amen. The scripture is saying, go to those who feel complacent. Advancement is a journey, not a destination. Wherever you are, you can move farther. Um, I heard about the story of um, the KFC guy. Um, what is his name again? Cornel. Cornel Sanders or whatever his name is. Imagine he started KFC at 60 something, 65, not at 40, not at 30, not at 20. Many people will say, if you cannot start a business at 20, then you're failed. Imagine he started a business that has outlived him at 65. At least, no country you go to, you'll not find KFC. No, no, not all countries, but at least in most modern countries, you find KFC. So that's to show you a man that did not give up. I'm sure when he was 20, he did some things. He had a form of advancement. 40, he had his own advancement. 60, he had advancement. But at 65, a different level of advancement set in. And that's outlived him now. So brothers and sisters, no matter where you are, don't just stay there and think that is the end of it. There's still more ahead. Consider Anna. Another is, Anna is another... Um, a person we can look at at, at a journey of advancement. If you're looking at Anna, she is a woman that most women want to be like. A woman that her husband actually told her that I, you are worth more than 10 sons to me. And imagine in those days where children were seen as actually a pride, this man was saying, I'd rather have you rather than have 10 sons. That's to show you a kind of, um, a kind of love that she has attained. And yet, she did not just stop there. Her husband gave her double portion of whatever she, he, he, he gives the other woman, Penila. And yet, she did not just feel content there. Let's read First Samuel chapter 1, 4 to 5. Whenever the day came for Elkanah to yes. sacrifice, yes. he would give portions of the meat to his wife Penina yes. and to all her sons and daughters. Yes. But to Hannah, he gave a double portion. He gave a double portion. Because he loved her and the Lord had closed her womb. Amen. And if you read verse 8, verse 8 of that same chapter 1. Her husband, Elkanah, would say to her. He would say to her. Hannah, yes. why are you weeping? Why don't you eat? Why are you downhearted? Don't I mean more to you than ten sons? Amen. Many women will have said, you know, at least I have the love of my husband. That's good enough. But she did not. She said, God, I need more advancement. And indeed, God gave, took her to that level where she received that son, Samuel, a boy that changed the history of Israel. That's the advancement she received. And you'll have assumed that she received one. She should have, been, she should have said, God, ah, thank God I have one now. I should stop having children. The Bible said she had five more. Let's read First Samuel chapter 2, verse 21. And the Lord was gracious to Anna. Yes. She gave birth to three sons and three two sons daughters. Three sons and two daughters. Meanwhile, the boy Samuel grew up in the presence of the Lord. Lord Samuel, they made six. So you can see her advancement was not a destination, but was a journey. She went from being loved. She married a man that loved her with everything he can give to, to, to the place where God gave her Samuel and to a place where now she has six children. That's the kind of advancement God is speaking for us. 
a place where we can move from one level to another. Not a destination. I say, oh, I've reached here. I'm now settled. There are a lot of people who have moved to North America. And North America has been worse for them than from, from, what they're, from where they're coming from. So, yes, you are in North America. There's still more land. There's still more to, over, to, 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 to cover. There's still more to possess. And that's why God is saying to those who are single, I want to take you to that place where you're going to have a spouse. And for those who have spouses, how your spouse will love you. For those who, are, who have those spouses, are, are, love them to a place where they will, they will have children, and not just one, not just two, but children, to the content of God. Today, I'm still going to speak about children, but not right now, because we live in an age where people are playing God. Amen. I have one, I have two, I know that. I'm going to lock the door. But we're going to still talk about that later. But what I just want to bring out is what God is saying. Advancement is a journey. And God wants to take you on that journey. Where from one level to another. From one testimony to another. Not just a testimony one time and it's finished. I remember this lady back home uh, when I was much, much, much younger. She gives testimony for the weirdest things ever. I remember those days when they say, uh, I just forget what they call her name. Is that mama? I forget what, what they call her name. But she always come. And she has a song she always sings. That's why they would say it's one minute. But she always say, oh, I think they call her Mama Belefu Mudi Yo. Yeah, she will always give a testimony. That, oh, one person wanted to do this thing for me. But I don't as soon as I, and, and to be honest, now looking back, all those things were testimonies. But then as a child, I felt like she was just wasting our time. Like, really? This woman has a testimony again? But that's what God wants to do in our lives. We will only have a testimony every day. But the thing is, you we look at people, we want to always set for less. As soon as that one testimony comes, we want to close. You yourself, we are the ones that are closing the door. I say, you know, God, you know what? No more testimonies. I think this where, where I am right now is good enough. But that's not what God wants for us. And you will imagine after we've seen how good and how God can take you, how he can take you spiritually, because the advancement God wants to do is not only in the physical things, but also in the spiritual things. He said in the book of Third John, verse 2, let's read Third John, verse 2, he said, I wish above everything that you might be well with you, that you might prosper as your soul prospered. The three realms of blessing. Your, this, let's, Third John, yes. He said, I pray, dear friend, I pray that you may enjoy good health. In your body, and may go well with you in everything around you, even as your soul gets is getting along well. Amen. The King James Version will say, I wish above all things that it might be well with you and you might prosper, even as your soul prospered. Amen. So that's what God wants to do. Where in your body it is well with you. You are aging and you are aging well. You are growing old and you are growing old well. You are at 60 and people are looking at you and saying, oh, Are you just, did you just turn 40? And you're saying, it is God's grace. And every day, everything around you is going well. Your children are flourishing. Your grandchildren are flourishing. God, that's what God wants to do. And even as your own soul, as your spirit man, is also growing. But the thing is this, why would a man want to settle less for what God wants to do more? When God wants to do more? Let's read Numbers chapter 32. We read from verse 5. You see there, at least from that, that's one character or one example of people that actually settled less than what God wanted more for them. God said he would take them into the land. But when they go to that place, they saw that this place seems big enough, and they felt like, you know what? There's no point going further anymore. We think it's good here. Let's read Numbers chapter 32, 1 to 5. The Reubenites and Gadites, yes. who had very large herds and flocks, yes. saw that the lands of, Ga- of Jaza and Gilead were suitable for livestock. Yes. So they came to Moses and Eleazar the priest, yes. and to the leaders of the community, and said, Ataroth, Dibon, Jazer, Nimrah, Eshbon, Elila, Sebam, Nebo, and beyond. The land the Lord subdued before the people of Israel are suitable for livestock, and your servants have livestock. If we have found favor in your eyes, then they said, let this land be given to your servants as our possessions, as our possession. Do not make us cross the Jordan. Amen. These people said they don't want to go any further anymore. You know, we've gone this far. We don't want to go much farther. God has blessed me with one child. I think I'm not going to stop here. Uh, God has blessed me with two. Oh, I already have a boy and a girl. What else am I looking for? I'm going to stop here. 
if you read um, Deuteronomy chapter 1, 6 to 7, the scripture says, he said, God said, you have stayed in this place too long. Break camp and go northward. There are different kind of movements. There's a regression kind of movement. That's also a movement. There's one that you just go in circles. It's also a movement, but it's not progressive. But it's one that goes forward, northward. That's what God desires of, for us. And God actually told the children of Israel that he wanted them to advance. He didn't want them to stay in one place. So if God can say to a man, I want you to advance, then why would a man want to remain in a place? Because what God asks for you, I can tell you, brothers and sisters, I myself, don't, if, the Bible said, eyes have not seen, nor ears have heard, how are he as, how has it entered into the heart of men, what God has in plan for us, what God has in store for us. Two years ago, if somebody told me I'll be where I am today, I'll be in a status of what I am today, I will say no. Or maybe I won't, I won't say no because I believe God can take me there, but it's not just something I can fathom. But I'm standing in that thing today. And I know God that began it will ask more ahead of for me. So you can see it's beyond what you can even think of in mind. The Bible says in the book of Jeremiah 29, verse 11, it said, the plans I have for you are plans of peace and not of evil to bring you to an expected end, to set you down. But why would a man know that God has great things for him and yet he still wants to settle down for little? The first reason is this, because we tend to compare ourselves with ourselves. Comparing yourself to yourself. Let's read first, Second Corinthians, sorry. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12. We do not dare to classify or compare ourselves with some who commend themselves. When they measure themselves by themselves and compare themselves with themselves, they are not wise. Amen. Those who compare themselves with themselves are not wise. As believers, many of us have not taken the standard of the world to measure our life. And so as soon as you use that, that you have to, to, to measure your life, it seems as if you've attained. Because if you're already making that, that six-digit um, salary, and you already have a boy and a girl, and you, you tell yourself, then what am I, what else am I looking for? Because I got to the standard of the world, that's all that entails. And so that's why people who make the world their standard, people who compare themselves with themselves, people who say, oh, my brother has... Um, two. Means I have two. My brother has two houses. I have two houses. My this one do have the so are people who are who always want to limit themselves because they don't see any reason they need to move ahead. They might even think because they are one step ahead of the, the their siblings or their friends that means they are good enough. If truly you make God your standard. You will not stop until you attain the fullness which God wants for you. Jesus Christ said that greater things will you do. So because I have healed the sick, I have raised the dead, does not mean I should say it's good enough. I still need to go home and say, whatever that thing means, the greater things that I need to do, that the mother Jesus Christ, I have not yet attained it, then let me keep going. The Bible said when Jesus Christ go to a place, he healed all all who were sick. All. But have we ever seen any pastor at this point that healed all the sick in the congregation at one time? Not yet. But we're getting there. Where all the sick, all that were amazed, all that have been brought there for one reason or the other will be healed. That's what we're, we're that's, you can see there's still more. But those who compare themselves with themselves, the Bible said, are those who limit themselves. Let's read Ezekiel chapter 4, verse 4. Ezekiel 4, 4. And I saw that all toil and all achievement spring yes. from one person's envy yes. of another. This too is meaningless, a chasing after the wind. Amen. If you read, I think the King James, NIV, or sorry, the New King James says, then I observed that most people are motivated to success. I think the NLT. Um, uh, motivated to, to success because they envy their neighbors. This too is meaningless, a chasing after the wind. When man is now the, your standard, and of course as soon as you attain it or you surpass that, 
that you think that that's all you need to do. But when Jesus Christ is your standard, then whatever man has done will not be for you. Jesus Christ went to a party. The wine finished there. The Bible said it took he brought the best even after the end. He went, uh, it was, people were asking for food. He gave them so much food that there were 12 baskets, 12 baskets left. So whatever, if Jesus Christ is your standard, you will not think that whatever you obtained is something. Because you will be striving for that God-like success. The second reason why many of us want to limit ourselves to the place of, you know, I'm, I, this is good, there's no need to go further, is because of fear to fight for more. Fear to fight for more. Let's read Numbers chapter 32, verse 6. Moses said to the Gadites, Yes, Moses Rubenites, said to the Gadites, yes. Should your fellow Israelite go to war yes. while you sit here? Amen. You can see some people just want to sit down there. They don't want to fight anymore. You know what? I'm just going to sit down here. I've already attained mine, so that there's no need to fight for more. I've already raised one. I don't want to go through those sleepless nights anymore. I've already gotten the job. There's no need. I actually heard somebody say, because I don't want to pay too much taxes, I don't want to make money. And there are people like that. I actually know people like that in North America. The reason they don't work is because they said the government is scamming us. They are scamming us. They are taking all our taxes. Imagine I work and the government is taking 40% of my taxes. To be honest, I, the government takes over 48% of my own tax. About 48% of my um, salary goes towards taxes. But the thing is this, a lazy man has a reason to say I don't want to. Fear to want to fight for more. Has caused some people to say, you know what, I'm just going to sit where I am. They say, oh, you know what, I already know the devil I'm fighting on this level. There's no need to look for more trouble and go and, you know, trigger other devils. Where I am, I, I, I know the kind of fasting and prayer I, I prayed and fasted to get here. And I know if I want to get more, I will have to fight more demons. So there's no need to, I don't want to do any more fasting and prayer. And that's one of the reasons why some people have limited themselves. The truth is this, either you're rich, poor, healthy, sick, free, slave, the devil will always fight you. So if you know that, then why are you still holding back? If he's going to fight you anyways, then just keep fighting. Because to be honest, the Bible said, surely they shall gather. The Bible will not say if. No, the Bible says they will, may, surely they shall gather. Surely they will gather. So if they're going to go there, then make sure you fight them at the place you actually want to fight. Not allow them to now start coming to you. Let us become, let us have the heart of David. A heart that he ran ahead to fight uh, Goliath. He did not allow Goliath to come to him. He ran against Goliath. Those are the people that can take on this journey of advancement. People who are who have afraid to fear. Who, who, who are afraid to, to fight, who are afraid to pray, who are afraid to, to experience new things. They say, you know, I don't like change. I already have this career. Let me not stay here. There are people who will, never, who will never go farther than where they are. But I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. Number three reason why people, some people might actually, you know, become complacent or stay in where they are is laziness. Laziness. Let's read Proverbs chapter 12, verse 27. Lazy people. Lazy people. Don't even cook the game they catch. They don't even cook the game. Imagine, they caught something, they will not even cook it. Yes? But the diligent make use of everything they find. Amen. The lazy man will say, you know what? I mean, North America, you know, I just want to sit down. Already, I've, I've, I've worked eight hours already. There's no need to go out the more. I'm not asking us. I mean, I, I, I'll still speak about that, about... Uh, what is the, 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 the line, the thin line between, you know, seeking, to, seeking more in God and greed? There's a thin line. We're going to talk about that still in this topic. But one other I just want to bring out is this. Laziness will cause people not to take advantage of what is ahead of them. Uh, one of my mentors wrote something, I, and I was been, I've been trying to look for that um, writing for the past two weeks. Maybe I will call him and ask him for it. He, he read, he said, a woman who prays for God for a, a, a husband that is successful, 
hardworking and God-fearing, should also know that you're not always going to see your husband at home. Not because he does not want to be home, but because he had to attend to other things. He might not always give his attention to you because he might have to attend to other people too. But many of us just want to say, you know what, I just don't want that. You know, I don't want my husband to go out too much. Let him stay home so we can both drink this Gary. A lazy person will always seek a reason why they don't want to attain for more. Let's read Proverbs 22, verse 13. The sluggard says. The sluggard says. There is a lion outside. There's a lion outside. I'll be killed in the public square. I'll be killed in the public square. Has everybody on the public square been killed yet? No. But it's always a reason. Why do I don't want to do this job? You know, my back aches. Why do I don't want to do this job? Because, you know, it's going to take my time. Why do I don't want to do this? Oh, because of this. They will always give an excuse. Why they don't want to do advance? Why don't you want to have more children? You know, North America, uh, we are, you know, it's very, it's very busy. I can't have more than two. Having more than two is madness. I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. Laziness has actually allowed people to put themselves down. We don't know how old Anna was when she had Samuel. But once we know that Penina, her, her counterpart, had sons and daughters already. So that means maybe she's in her thirties or something like that, or whatever. But now she had Samuel, and she did not just say, oh, now I'm, you know I'm old, I can only have one. She actually had five more. Many of us would have liked the blessings to fall on our lap, but many people don't want to do the work for the blessing. They just want, you know, God. And that's why I say, God, see, many Christians are just well-wishers. Nigeria is a country where you have many Christians. But many things are going bad, not because God is not listening to our prayers, but because we always assume that prayer should change everything. There's a place for prayer. There's a place where you need to go out and do the work. You are praying that God, don't let my street flood. Oh, don't let, don't let my house flood. And you are one of the people that is throwing the wrapper and everything into the gutter. Don't you think the gutter will get blocked and the day it rains, it's supposed to drain. Won't they come to your house? So at times you need to do the work. Let's read Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 12. God does not bless imaginations. He does not bless wishes. Even if the English will tell you, if wishes were horses, even the beggars will ride on them. What God blesses is the works of your hands, not wishes, not imaginations. But the lazy man has now put himself down and say, you know, I'm just going to stay here because I don't want to do any work. You want God to bless you, then you have to work for it. You want, God, you want your marriage to be successful, then you have to do some work into it. Put some work into it. Come, up, come out of your comfort zone. Number four reason why um, many people remain where they are and don't want to venture out into that journey of advancement they feel like where they are is already enough. It's because of unfaithfulness. Let's read Luke chapter 16, verse 10. Luke 16, 10. Whoever can be trusted with very little. Whoever can be trusted with little. Can also be trusted with much. With much. And whoever is dishonest with very little. Yes. Will also be dishonest with much. Amen. And so this uh, factor is not actually about that person. It's about God. Now, looking at you. The reason why God does not allow some people to attain some level of advancement is because where they even are, they're not even faithful in it. What God has given unto them, they have not even proved themselves faithful in it. And that's why God is not giving, he's not opening other doors for them. The, the one he gave you, you have not even taken care of that person. You have not even been able to even fend for him. Then why do you think he will give you more? The job he gave you, you are going to work every, every day late. Your boss is complaining. Do you think they're going to make you supervisor? Never. God wants to use us for greater things. But we must prove ourselves faithful. But unfaithfulness has caused many of us not to be able to enjoy that, that advancement in this journey. We have, not, we have limited ourselves because we have not been faithful in our tithes and offering. Brothers and sisters, a man who cannot pay tithes on $100 can't, 
can never pay tithes on ten thousand dollars. Ten dollar, um, hundred dollars tithe is ten dollars. $10,000 is $1,000. And that's why you need to live to that level where you say, God, yes, it looks as if it's... I've said this several times. So don't think that we are all, all there. There are times we ourselves struggle and we have to still say, God, I put this thing down. I look, I don't want to consider it. That's why as soon as my day of time, period of time comes, I don't wait till 6.30 a.m. As soon as 6 a.m., I do the transaction. So by before 7, so someone will tell me that I need money, so and I can't pay it anymore. I make sure God goes first. I remove the sacred thing from my home first. Then the other ones, and I tell myself, I, let me see how I'm going to juggle it. I don't want to juggle tight. I want to first of all be faithful with it first. And you believe that many times I tell myself, because the devil has come to me. If I tell you the devil has not said, to, see, there's one day I was sitting down, I was telling God, God, how will I come out faster from this death, from this hole? And a suggestion came to my heart. I said, remember, David, when he was hungry, had ate the sacred bread from the temple. You can also dust, you know, that 5,000, you can use it towards your, your debt. And by the time, if you do that for two months, you're already out. And you keep on paying tight. <laughs> and you won't believe it. I almost felt, because it sounds so, like, you know, it's true. Huh? Yes, David, and the shrewd bread. Then a still small voice. He is lighter one not said. But remember, if you use the tight, according to Deuteronomy, you're supposed to put a fifth of it. That means if I ever try to use my tight for any reason, the day I'm paying it back, I should be paying that same amount plus 20%. Which bank? That I'm like, no, I don't want to pay 20%. Imagine I'm supposed to pay only $100. And the day I'm not going to pay, you want me to not pay 120 No, I'm good. And that was why I said to myself, you know what? I'm not going to take the advice of the devil. If I pray God, we help us in Jesus' name. Faithfulness will cause you to enjoy more advancement in this journey. But unfaithfulness will cause people to be limited and stay where they are. And lastly, number five reason why many people are not, is, no, are not advancing or are actually limiting themselves to saying I'm not advancing is because many people want to play God. And this is now where I'm going to talk about children, about advancement in career and other things like that. Let's open our Bibles to Genesis chapter 11 verse 4. Genesis chapter 11 verse 4. Then they said. Then they said. Come. Yes. Let us build ourselves a city. Let us build. A, is it bad for a man to want to build a city? No. Let's go on. With a tower that reaches to the heavens. Is it bad to want to reach, build a tower that reaches up to the heavens? No. Let's go on. So that we may make a name for ourselves. Is it bad to make a name for yourself? No. Let's go on. Otherwise we will be scattered over the face of the whole earth. Otherwise we will be scattered over the face of the whole earth. That is where all those three goals they had in the beginning was wrong. The city building, the tower building, the name making will have made sense if it was not this for this last reason. They rejected to be scattered on the face of the earth, which was directly in contrast to what God said in the book of Genesis chapter 1. He said, let them spread over all the face of the earth. But now they are saying... God, we don't want to spread over the face of the earth. We just want to stay in one place and come upwards. We don't want to spread. We just want to stay in one place. People are trying to play God. And that's why they're not enjoying the advancement God desires for them. All they're asking is, I want to go upwards. When God is saying, I want to spread in every other area. They're saying, no, let, let them just go upwards. That advancement you're looking for upwards is not what God is looking for you. Is this one God actually wants you to do? But today we see many people, that's what they are focused on. Trying to do what God has not asked them to do. God said, be fruitful and multiply. But virtually not America. And honestly, I understand. Having one, I know how hard it is. 
where the child just wakes up from, the, from his sleep and is crying uncontrollably. The mom tries to pacify, take breaths, he's saying no. And you also say, okay, let me do dry as a father. You try this one. After a while, you, see, you even say, let me try being stern. Stop it! Stop it! <laughs> you try out techniques. When you say, stop it! You see that this boy is not, uh, this boy is not working. Though. You not say, okay, sorry, 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 sorry. I understand all that. But still, God is saying, multiply. But people are now trying to play God. You know, I just want a boy and a girl, and I'll just put a seal to it. I don't, and to be honest, I'm not trying to speak to one person today, but this is what God is speaking to me, and that's why I'm saying it. Not that I, I have one person in mind or people that I want to challenge, but this is what God is saying. Many of us are trying to play God in the area of our marriages, in the area of our... Uh, we want the man. We demand that... I remember my in-law told me one thing. He said, when the day I came to marry my wife, that she said, God, let this be... Let, she, she, she called one of her daughters, one of the oldest daughter, and say, this guy just came with a shirt... And he just said he wants to marry. He did not even bring lots of things. He did not bring people and things like that. But she said, I thank God that I listened to God. I listened to my daughter. And I trusted that this boy that came with one shirt and never came with anybody has now become something. But many of us will have said, you know what? Yeah? You came alone. No one shirt. Ah, no, you're not marrying my daughter. You want to play the God. Or perhaps even the lady might have said, you know what? This man does not look promising. It does not look like that thing I, 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 I taught in my mind. Because then I was not what anybody taught in their mind. I was loaded with debt. I was, load, I was actually being it. So anybody who sees me will have thought, oh man, this is not what, where I should go. But those who play God have lost it. But those who rely on God and say, God, I trust you. And now the ones are saying, God, yes, he might look like it's nothing, but now he has become something for us. But today, many of us are trying to play God. When God is saying, that is the man I want you to marry. And you are saying, I can quote 10 Bible passages. That brother does not even know one Bible passage. And what God is telling you is, that is the man. You say, no, that man is not fit for my ministry. This man that looks like a bushman. Me, if I dress, I look like an angel. But he looks like a bushman. So you are looking for a, an angel that looks like you. Not knowing that that angel will become a demon. I always say this. A man that is too obsessed about himself. It's not your husband material. A man that is too obsessed about himself. It's not a, a, it's not a father. A father is a man who will do everything to make sure his children and his wife get the best out of it. But people who always, you, you, you have a child, you are married, and you have children, and you're going to the gym. You don't have, and you're not America. Maybe if you're in Nigeria, where you have time to do things, and your work will not disturb you. Maybe. Not America. This we are all here, and we all know. You work eight hours, you come back home, and you still have time. And you have children, and you have wife, and you still have time to go to the gym one hour. You're not, you're not, something's wrong with you. I'm not saying that people should not try and work out. Maybe you and your family, if you guys can make it a family um, thing where you all go, maybe good. Or maybe you guys walk in the evening, yes. But a man who's standing in front of the mirror, looking at himself, and do, I want this one to pump out. It's not, yet, it's not yet serious. But today, many of us are playing God. We have become like Lot in Genesis chapter 13, verse 10 to 11. Who said, who looked at the plains towards Sodom and Gomorrah, and it was so how well watered it was. That's how we are right now. We are, we are basing everything by our sight on how we feel. When God is saying, I want you to have as many children, and you're saying, no, two. If, if um, um, Jesse had had only two, two, two children, would David have been king? No. If, um, what's his name? Um, Jacob has stopped at Reuben and Levi and said, you know what, I don't want too many. Will he ever had uh, Joseph that brought, him at, um, at, that brought him to Egypt? No. But today we want to play God. Too. I can't do I can't. I mean, it's because many of us are too selfish. 
what we are thinking about is ourselves. Oh, this children will take my time. That means I will not be able to eat. I will not be able to go out. I will not be able to sleep. Did your own parents sleep? How many were you? I know, and to be honest, I'm not saying if you people, if God has said, you will give, then be ready for it. I pray God we help us in Jesus' name. The Bible says, so you're sitting in the morning, in the evening, for you don't know which one will grow. Perhaps both, or perhaps the one in the morning, or perhaps in the one in the evening. But we want to play God. In our career, we tell God, God, I don't want to go. No, 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 no. I just don't want, you know, the way I am is good enough. I don't want to move ahead. I don't want, I don't want to be on call. Oh, God, no, I don't want to be a pastor. You didn't call me for that. You know, I just want to stay where I am. And everybody can see, everybody can know that you are feed, filled with God's word. I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. The word, God's plan for us is to advance. But many people are limiting it. In the hymn which we sang today, we saw many realms of this idea of um, advancement. Say, I'm pressing on to the new heights. I'm gaining every day. So you can see. And that's why, and I didn't pick the hymn, but it's very fitting to show you what God wants to do. Where God wants us to live a life where we are every day we are gaining new heights. Today you can say, God, I'm a better person. I used to be given to a hunger before. When I, when I was much younger, if I'm one day older than you, you are in trouble. But today, even for those who are even 10 years younger than me, I call them even chairman. Not because they give me anything, but because give honor to whom honor is due. I want to treat everybody with dignity and respect. I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. Like I said, we are also going to talk about this, no, this the, 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 and line between greed and advancement. Because some people might take this teaching of advancement to, for greed. Where they just want more and more and more and they don't even know when to stop. Let's open our Bibles to Proverbs chapter 23, verse 4, the NLT version, the NLT. Don't wear yourself out trying to get rich. Don't wear yourself out trying to get rich. Be wise enough to know when to quit. Amen. That means there's what? There's a time to know when to quit. When that thing has now become, Bible said in the book of uh, uh, Proverbs chapter 10, verse 22, it said the blessings of the Lord make it rich and hearts not sorrow to it. Proverbs 10, 22. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 22. So if, if, that, if you now say that, that what you are seeking right now is taking you to the place of sorrow, then perhaps step back. Then that is no longer advancement. The advancement that is bringing sorrow is not from God. That's plain. The advancement that will cause you to cheat on your wife is no longer advancement. The advancement that wants to break your marriage is no longer advancement. The advancement that will cause you to be, to be far from God is no longer advancement. Let's read Proverbs chapter 30, verse 9, the NLT version also. Proverbs 39. Maybe let's start from verse 8, well, then we, we can fully understand what that text is saying. From verse 8. Proverbs chapter 30, from verse 8. First. Yes? Help me never to tell a lie. Sorry, let's start from verse 7. Sorry. Let's, let's start from verse 7. I remember when I... Before I became a pastor, when I see pastors do things like this, I'm very annoyed. I'm like, don't you know where you're going to read before? You not tell us, oh, sorry, go back to five past two. So, technical, don't be angry. Let's see, yes? Oh, God. Oh, God. I beg two favors from you. I ask two things I ask of you. I mean, I'm quoting the, N I'm the King James. She's reading the NLT, yes? Let me have them before I die. They do not deny me before I die, yes? First. Number one, help me never to tell a lie. So that the first thing, let no falsehood be found in my lips. One. Second. Yes. Give me neither poverty nor riches. So those two are put together. Don't make me too rich. Don't make me poor. Yeah. Give me just enough to satisfy my just needs. Just give me what that will satisfy my needs. For and, for, and for every one of us, our needs are different. A man who has ten. You, you know, even when God, in the book of Exodus, when he was telling them to do the um, Passover, he said, for the one who has a few family, they should take only one lamb. And if you know that um, one lamb is even a bit too much for your family, look for a neighbor 
that does not have so much like you, both of you can combine together and just eat one. But there are some families that we have to eat three. Because in their home, they're like 15 or 20. So you can imagine when God is supplying to the one who has only two children, he gives one lamb. But to the one who has 20 children, God is giving three lambs. So you can see that satisfying my needs is a relative term. Okay, let's go on. For if I grow rich. For if I grow rich. I may deny you and say. The King James says, so if I become too wealthy, I may become, so you know, to the point where I, I feel like I disdain God. You know, I feel like God is not needed. Yes? Who is the Lord? I say, who is the Lord? And if I am too poor. Yes. I may still and thus insult God's holy name. Amen. Thank you very much. The wealth that takes you away from God is not what God wants from you. And that's, where we, that's the line between advancement and greed. Let me tell you, there's a kind of wealth you will have. You will not have time for your family. When you are the CEO of a company that controls billions of dollars, that have affiliations with Japan, Korea, Russia, England, Africa, um, some country, Africa is not a country, you know, Nigeria, Ethiopia, and all those places. And you have to travel to all those places. Will you be home to see your family? Before you know it, in the 365 days of the year, you're only home for five days. The other ones, you're with your personal assistant that's very beautiful in hotels. Your personal assistant will now even know what kind of food you, you eat, even more than your wife. Imagine the person assistant will say, no, our guy only likes two cubes of sugar in his tea. And the wife will not even know. Because she does not even see the man, the man anymore. I'm not saying, but there are also CEOs who are able to manage it and balance it. That are Christians. So I'm not saying that if you are a Christian, you cannot be a CEO. You can be a Christian and still be a CEO. But you, you yourself need to know when it is no longer advancement anymore. It's become greed. And that's not what God is asking. What God is asking is the blessing that you yourself can give God praise and say, God, indeed, I bless you. There's a, there's a saying that says, the best time to hit the high on is when it is hot. Brothers and sisters, this is the time to hit the high on. When God is saying, this is our season of advancement. In this season of advancement, start throwing that seed. The best time to sow is when rain is falling. When it is rainy season, plant because you know the heavens will cause things to work for you even more. I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. Lastly, let us read Romans chapter 3, 3 to 4. Because I've heard many people say, you know, I've done everything the pastor said I should do. But I still realize that nothing came by. Brothers and sisters, one thing I am confident of. When God says that this year I will do this and it does not happen, you won't believe it. I never question God. I either question myself or the vessel which it came out from. Let's read uh, Romans chapter 3, verse 3 to 4. True. True. Some of them were unfaithful. Yes. But just because they were unfaithful does not mean God will be unfaithful. Because some pastors are liars does not make God a liar. Because some pastors have not done what they need to do does not mean God will not do what he said he will do. Because even you yourself have been unfaithful does not make, make God unfaithful. Let, now let's go on. Of course not. Of course not. Even if everyone else is a liar. Even if everyone else is a liar. God is true. Yes. As the scriptures say about him. Yes. You will be proved right in what you say. Yes. And you will win your case in court. Amen. Let's read the New King James Version for that version for verse 4. He said, let, he said, let every man be a liar and let God be true. Brothers and sisters, God has said that the, this season is our season of advancement. And honestly... I'm seeing the advancement because, you know, things that my parents could not do. I you know I, I come from a place, Okbela, in Mekuri, and they'll tell you that, uh, you know, seven old men took seven white stones and made um, curses and said, you know, the, well, the things of the, of, the, um, of the white man will never enter their land. And so it's very hard for you to see anyone from my village buy new cars, buy do new things. And I, until recently, I told myself I have to break that curse. The curse that says I will not buy a new car, I, I, I will break it. I will not buy a new thing, I will break it. And recently, too, about a week ago or two weeks ago, someone I know 
that at least I will, not, I will not say he has bought new for himself. He's now buying new for himself. That's, uh, to me, at one point I said, he doesn't really need it. But at another point I said, now at least God is breaking that course. This is an advancement for him. That even when he had the strength to even do it, he could not do it. But now that everybody thought the strength is gone, God is doing it for him. That is God's advancement. So, brothers and sisters, this is the best time to hit that iron. Look for that. Now start looking for that advancement in your life. For those whose marriages are not as they wish it would be. Now start praying and start working towards your marriage. For those who God has told before that your house will be filled with children. But you have always stopped at two. Maybe perhaps this is the time for you to remove the curtain. And say, God, we are open for more blessing. For those who God has said, I will make you a manager, I will take you further. But they have said, you know what, I don't like this, too much responsibility. Perhaps this is the time for you to say, God, I want to start moving ahead. For those who God has said, I will use you greatly. But they are saying, you know, I just like this little ministry I am. I don't want to go further. Perhaps this is the time for you to start moving further. Why? We are in the season of advancement. And I pray God himself will advance us in Jesus' name. I just want to just bow our heads to pray. And let's tell the God of heaven that, oh God, open my eyes to that advancement you want from me. And in any way, I myself have tied myself down from advancing. Help me, oh God, to come out of love in Jesus' name. In any way, I'm comparing myself with myself. In any way, I've become lazy. In any way, I've become unfaithful. In any way, I've become, I'm playing God. O oh God of heaven, have mercy, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And O oh God of heaven, I prayed for advancement in every area of my life, that now I receive my advancement in Jesus' name. I receive advancement in my career, in my marriage. I receive advancement, O oh God, in my life, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Thank you for this, O oh God, I give you praise. In Jesus' name, we are praying. O oh God of heaven, Lord, I stand as a priest over this house and as a prophet to God, and I declare, let that advancement you have spoken of manifest in the life of this one's Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. You said in your word, you said the laborers shall be the first partakers of the first fruits. And we declare, let us be the first partakers of the first fruits in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for the soul. We give you praise. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Amen. Amen.